the greatness gang welcome back to another episode of king of the mix where i'm here to help you conquer all your issues as a beginner mixer producer and artist and today we're going to be discussing how to use high and low pass filters so the reason why you want to use high and low pass filters because it gets rid of all the unnecessary low end build up and the high end that's not very audible and it removes a lot of that mud from your frequencies and makes space for the proper frequency for the proper instruments and occupy certain frequencies so let's get straight into the session and let's listen to a little bit of it first got a quick basic level on it So, nice rock song there. So let's start off by cutting out the low end in the drum. So we can start with the kick drum. And I just basically got a SSL channel strip loaded up on most of the instruments or the buses. And you can use any plugin. A stock EQ will work the exact same way. All you're gonna be doing is just literally rolling off the lows and rolling off the highs you could do this in a stock plugin the plugin doesn't matter so you're going to start with the kick so you want to do all of this not in solo so you know how much to roll off let's start with the kick start from the beginning you're gonna uh, mute the vocals though for now You want to roll off until it starts sounding thin. This kick is already pretty thin. I guess it was a bad recording. But you want to roll off till it's thin and then significantly pull it back. See, that's way too much. In kick drum, you're going to usually roll off about 25 to 60 hertz at max depending on what the bass is doing and the genre of the song so for this we're going for the low we're going to roll off about 36 hertz and then we're going to roll back some of the highs you could go pretty far on kick drum go to the snare roll off the lows now let's roll off some of the highs Now no overheads. No overheads is not that much low in it anyway. See so when I take off too much of the high, the overheads disappear.
you don't really hear too much pass about 22 to 25 kilohertz anyway so all of this like 32 hertz you gonna get rid of that let's find the toms next section where the toms is really audible you can see in the peaks here just let me loop this Let's, let's take the guitars out. You can see on the meter when the tom hits. Gotta remember the tom is a low end instrument. You know you want to keep that low end on it. You still don't want it clashing with the kick and the bass. We could get away with 15 kilohertz taking off from the top. Let's go to the second tom. This is pretty simple, like, you also do it to your liking. This is like really no set rule, but you should know how a song naturally sounds. A song doesn't sound thin, or a song doesn't sound too dark and muddy, like a pillowcase is over top of it, so you don't want to take out too much of the high eyes. Let's go up to the tambourine. As you can tell, that doesn't have too much low end, so you can get away with a lot. See, I'm at 150. We took off a lot, and it still sounds the same, so. You don't want to take off too much where it's noticeable, or it doesn't have no low end or highs. You still want everything to sound cohesive and not separated. Let's go to the bass. Let's see, the bass is completely gone. So. For a bass, you're usually going to take off about 25 to maybe 60 hertz, depending on the genre. The bass is usually more subby than the kick. And it doesn't usually have too much high end, so you can get away with taking off a lot. You could get away with, let's see if you solo this. You could get away with taking almost 3K off. And it still doesn't sound too much different. And that's a good thing that you're not hearing the 
too much of a noticeable difference. You more so want to feel it. We're going to go to 3K and just pull a little bit back. Like once you feel as though you're at a good amount, just pull it back probably about 3 to 5 dB. So it still sounds natural. guitars just for the sake of this video that are EQ and all them individually just routed them all to a guitar bus and you're just gonna EQ them as a whole and guitar you will take off about 50 to 100 Hertz usually and as you're rolling off just like a b back and forth to hear how it's sounding if you're hearing too much of a noticeable change and you're taking off too much. Then you can hear how the guitars got super dark when I went to 3K. You usually want to cut anywhere between like 9K, 8K to 12K. start with the lead vocal and this is a female vocal so female vocal versus a male vocal you could take off more low end or you could go anywhere between like 80 hertz to about 120 because you still want it to sound like a natural speaking voice. You don't want it to sound thin because when people talk, even if it's a woman, you still can hear some subby frequencies in someone's voice. So you don't want to sound thin, thin like paper. See if I go extreme, hear how thin it is. Let's keep it in that. 80 to 120 range. And if you feel like you have a good amount, but you think you uh, took off a teeny bit too much, always remember once you start adding additive EQ, like on the low end, you still can make up for what you cut. So like, say if you cut up to about 120, and you feel as though that's a good amount, but you're kind of second guessing it. Always remember you could go back later and add in some more low end. Hear how that's making up for what I cut. So don't stress yourself out about it. You are the one you make me feel like this. You are the one screaming you hypocrite. 
for vocals when I'm cutting off the top end. I usually stick between 18 to 22K. Because I like a nice warm vocal. And I don't want it to sound muddy. And also remember, you're still going to go back and brighten it up later when you add in some top end. The, the main thing when you're high passing and low passing is more so for not for you to hear it. It's more so like if you're going to be listening to this song in a car or a club or a venue, it's, it's more so the frequencies that you could feel. So don't feel as though like, oh, I need to hear the difference. Like. This is not that type of subtractive EQ that you can actually hear. Let's go to the first background vocals. And the background vocals is women vocals also, so we could pretty much uh, cut it the same. Sometimes since the background vocals isn't the primary vocal, you could get away with cutting it a little bit more, probably about three to five more frequencies than the lead vocal. It's just there really for support. You don't really want it to outshine or clash with the lead vocal. some male background vocals so I usually keep those between about 80 and 100 I don't want a male vocals more thin than the female vocals men usually have more bass in their voice than women so you want it to still sound natural just cleaned all of that unnecessary low end and high end up to make space for the frequencies that could occupy those better and to just give you a tighter cleaner less muddy mix so we can uh just do a before and after uh you know cut the eq on and off on everything This is uh, B4. You can hear that it's sounding like crowded and muddy. Here's after. B4. B4. 
before. It sounds like the guitars has been lifted and the bass is tighter. The snare is a teeny bit brighter. And I know these frequencies aren't super audible and it comes with practice and training your ear, but it just takes time. But this is like the first step when you're cleaning up your mix that you want to do. And it's going to make your additive EQ that much easier your decisions so yeah this is how you use low pass and high pass filters so thank you for joining me on another episode of king of the mix don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video greatness gang